All right, I'm about to throw in this intake manifold spacer. It's a half inch billet spacer. It comes with the gasket and the hardware that you need. Uh, basically, it's raising up this plenum a half inch. That makes the runners a little bit longer and that brings the torque curve down into a lower RPM range, which is where you'll normally be anyways, instead of uh, having the torque at such a high RPM where you have to wind up the mortar quite a bit just to get it out of it. All right, so there's a ton of videos showing you how to take the intake manifold off these Tacomas. Uh, it's two 10 millimeter bolts on this cover. Okay, so then you have the stock air box. There is a 10 mil here, 10, 10. You unclip the air box lid. There's a little rubber vacuum hose in the back, a mass airflow sensor plug and clip and then the PCV valve hose, and it comes right off. Okay, so now that the box is off, you can see, especially if you're driving off-road a lot, there's a bunch of dirt everywhere, so I'll cover up the throttle body, hit it with the leaf blower. Just to make sure nothing pops up or gets in the way as far as fine dust and debris when you take the manifold off. Okay, so this spacer is going underneath that part and the aluminum intake manifold. So the plenum, aluminum intake manifold, it's gonna have a spacer right in between, bring it up a half inch, and it comes with longer bolts because the stock stuff is gonna be too short. Okay, so on the intake manifold removal, it's pretty easy. You've got one clip right here in the back, and then in the back, these two hoses are screwed in. Um, there's a 10 millimeter bolt. It's easy to get with a quarter inch deep 10 millimeter socket. It comes right off. Uh, you've got a few hoses here, plugs, and um, the three mounting brackets that secure it. Pretty much remove all that stuff, it pops right off. Um, I like to take the throttle body off and just let it sit here. That way you're not messing with the coolant that flows through it and having to bleed the cooling system. There's a gasket right here and right here. Uh, these are relatively new, so I'm going to be reusing them. But most of the time you can reuse them. You don't need to get new ones. Uh, it's always good to have an extra set on hand. I always do, just in case. But um, on this job, we're going to be reusing the stock ones. Okay, so back here there's a harness. Um, I usually use a pick just to get it undone and I'll move it out of the way rather than trying to take the clip out of the bottom of the manifold. It's a lot easier. All right, once everything's loose, the manifold will just come right. All right, so with the manifold out, you can see exactly where the spacer is going to be sitting right on top of that. These are going to be too short, so you'll need an E7 bit internal Torx bit goes right on and it'll pull that stud right out and then you'll have uh, regular hex bolts all the way across rather than allen bolts and two studs with the nuts okay so over here on the plenum you can see the gasket still really good it's got about i don't know 20,000 miles since i put it in so they're reusable uh, i've seen trucks with over 200,000, and the gasket's still in pretty decent shape but you don't want to use it when it gets that high uh, same thing goes for throttle body gasket these are still good to go i also wanted to mention this truck is tuned and has negative three degree cam gear so this was a pretty big trend last summer uh, these are keyed three degrees retarded for the exhaust cam gears since they're fixed whereas the intake cam gears are variable and so this is the original keyway and then the negative three degrees so that retarded the exhaust cams on both heads. It dumped out more exhaust, created room for more fuel and air on the combustion and power stroke, and uh, gave it more power along with the tune. The tune helped a lot as well. And the last part before going any further, I cleaned the throttle body. Scotch Bright, the mating service right here, make sure it's super clean so it's got a good seal. And same goes for the intake manifold plenum, Scotch Bright, everything. Make sure there's no oil, clean it all up, and now you're ready for the next step, which is basically just laying on this gasket. I bought two for a spare, so I got one for later on. Laying down that. 
getting this spacer on. And then the plenum goes right back on top of that. Okay, so now we're down to the stud removal. I put a 3 8 adapter to quarter inch and you're doing this after you put these regular bolts in. That way when you remove this, you don't have the chance of dropping anything into the runners. Um, especially with them being open, it'd be pretty impossible to get anything out. So these studs are not hard to get out. You just have to have the right bit. I think maybe even pre-loosening them with uh, some vice grips when you have all that extra room might be okay but you don't want to fully remove them until the manifold is completely off so then in the place of that it's a standard bolt just like the rest of them and then you do the same for the back and continue moving forward. Next is torquing the manifold. It's 21 foot pounds and you do a cross pattern. the throttle body on and torque that next all right throttle body is bolted back up torque is nine foot pounds some people do this by hand i've got a torque wrench so i use it but it's really easy to tighten these smaller 10 millimeter bolts too tight and this throttle body has bungs that are molded into the intake manifolds so if you do it too tight and they just spin you kind of screwed on that one Okay, so I've got the spacer in, all the bolts are torqued, throttle body's torqued. I was able to get this back clipped into the stock position, put the clip back on. This is the hose that goes to the back of this box. Back here, I had to leave this harness below the original clip. So I left that down there, but I was able to get the 10 millimeter back on these two heater hoses. So make sure you bolt that down, that way those heater hoses aren't moving all over the place. Uh, next step is going to be finalizing this side and the uh, reinforcement brackets. All right, so we got the intake bolted back up. We got the 10 in the back, 10 on the throttle body, connected the hose. And I made a small little washer down here uh, just so that the box isn't pinned sideways. I didn't come with the kit, but I had some plastic I just trimmed down real quick. And then I always clean the mass airflow sensor when I've got it this far. Uh, this one you can see is pretty dirty, not too bad, but it's just good maintenance to do while it's out. So get yourself a can of this cleaner. Just takes a few sprays. Got it all cleaned up again. And then I put a small skim coat on the O-ring just so that when I put it back in, you're not fighting anything or pinching that O-ring and it just drops right into place. Then you just put the screws back in and plug it up. Moving on to the last step are the three brackets that hold the manifold on this side, just for some uh, structural support. And I slot the bottom. That way the top uses the regular bolts, looks clean on top, and the bottom slotted to account for the half inch that the spacer put on the runners. All right, so this was barely touching that wire harness, and I don't want that causing any problems. So I grabbed hold of it right here where it goes to this small silver bracket and just bent it down a bit. That way you don't have any rubbing issues or future breakdowns on the trail as well. All right, so at this time it is running, relearning the idle. I have this little scanner, so I got in there, cleared the computer just so it starts fresh. Uh, but if you don't have a code reader, you can start it and just let it idle for five to 10 minutes and it'll relearn itself. All right, so I've gone about 180 miles round trip. Uh, this is my daily commute to work, this, this Kellogg Hill. Uh, it's got a pretty steep grade. And before the spacer, this thing was constantly needing to be dropped from D to four manually. And uh, now on this drive today, it's in D and everything is like it was before. Even uh, 
feels kind of like when I had stock tires. Uh, the gearing is nice, the RPMs are fine. Driving up to Big Bear before on the stock gears without the spacer, I was needing to drop from D to four to even three at the very steep inclines. And on my last trip this weekend, it was in D the whole time, uh, which to me is a big help because it's annoying having to constantly move that thing around. Uh, at some point, this truck will get re-geared, but it doesn't really need it, to be honest. Um, it'll help, but right now, with the spacer, the negative three degree exhaust cam gears, and the tune, the truck feels great. Um, it's really, there's really no need to tear apart the diffs right now until I have either a gear failure or I step up the tire size uh, even bigger, but I don't really plan on going anything past 